again guys, in today's video I'll be showing you this Corsair K95 RGB Platinum XT mechanical gaming keyboard. It comes in at a whopping price point of £209.99, but it does have some really cool new features. So let's get it unboxed and check it out. Underneath is where you'll find the accessory box. This does contain the additional FPS and MOBA keycaps with the key puller, as well as a Stream Deck S keycap and a Corsair logo keycap. Personally, I do like to use the Corsair logo keycap as an escape key. First of all, it does look very clean and very premium. Uh, it still has that beautiful anodized brushed aluminium frame to it, which definitely helps make it look a lot more aesthetically pleasing in my opinion. It's better than it just being like this black plastic or black aluminium or just something that looks really, really boring. It gives it some sort of design and quirkiness to it, which I really like. It does have a USB pass through, 19 zones of RGB with per key LED customization, thanks to the Corsair IQ software and it also has a 1.8 metre braided cable. It is an extended size keyboard due to the fact it does have the six onboard macro keys and the dedicated media controls too. Unfortunately, it is only available in the black colour at the moment. I think it would be really cool if they kind of upgraded it and made it into the silver version. So maybe, you know, that's something that will happen in future. The wrist rest that's included has had a major upgrade. Um, this time it is a detachable plush leatherette wrist rest and it feels absolutely phenomenal. So going from a original K95 keyboard that had the plastic slash rubber wrist rest that was like reversible and everything, um, it just was not very comfortable after long periods of use. However, I've been using this version with the plush leatherette wrist rest and I'm absolutely in love with it. It feels so comfortable. I don't feel at any point I have to kind of move my hands because it feels just painful or anything like that. It's absolutely wonderful. And I'm so happy that Corsair have decided to take on the plush leatherette wrist rest. Um, it just, it feels great and it's super, super comfortable. The only downside I did find to the wrist rest was that it still has the plastic clip design to attach it to the keyboard. Uh, in my opinion, these clips are very flimsy and all it takes is for someone to be a little bit too forceful when attaching it to the keyboard or um, accidentally dropping it and the plastic clips are unfortunately going to break. Without the wrist rest attached, the dimensions come in at 465 millimeters in length by 171 millimeters in width by 36 millimeters in height and then has a total weight of 1.31 kilograms. The keycaps are PBT double shot keycaps with a thickness of 1.5 millimeters. This is to help them reduce kind of the fade that you get over time on the keys and generally help hide the sweat marks and the grease marks that you get that's left behind and is generally making them a lot more durable as well. It is worth mentioning as well that the FPS, MOBA and S keys that are included unfortunately aren't PBT double shot um, just for the fact that they have that texture and is generally the colour of them too. This version of the keyboard that I'm reviewing today does have the Cherry MX Speed silver switches which have an actuation point of 1.2 millimetres. However, depending on which switch type you prefer, you can pick it up in the Cherry MX Brown or the Cherry MX Blue too. The Cherry MX Speed Silver switches do take a little bit of time to get used to, so if you're not accustomed to them like I was already, uh, it does take a while and generally you find that you act, like accidentally press keys that you didn't want to press because you don't have to put as much effort into actuating a key and then obviously it acknowledges you a lot faster too. The only major difference I found is just the PVT double shot keycaps. Um, they look great and just generally I'm still yet to find a mark on it.
One of the really cool features with these keyboards is that they do have the Elgato Stream Deck uh, integration. So it means where the macro keys are on the keyboard, you can actually go ahead and customize them within the Elgato Stream Deck software and you can change them to do different functions, whether you're a broadcaster and you obviously you wanna stop and start stream or if you wanna tweet immediately or something like that, you can do it all from the press of one of these keys, which is great. It is worth mentioning though, that you don't just have to specifically buy this keyboard in order to have the Stream Deck integration. Um, it does work with the original K95, the K95 SE, um, this version, and the uh, K55 RGB version keyboard too. Generally, I do think that it's a really good idea, especially if people, yes, they may already have the Stream Deck um, separately but it means that they can have different functions from the stream deck and then obviously from the actual macro keys on the side too and obviously it makes it look a lot more aesthetically pleasing with the included s keys as well during playing games or anything like that if you have set up the keyboard to do the stream deck stuff um, you can actually have the action bar open at all times so if you feel like you've forgotten what you've allocated the keys you can actually go ahead and have a look on the action bar and just know which ones you're pressing um, or you can hide it if you want to. The only thing I did notice is that you didn't have any folder options with the Stream Deck integration using the keys on the keyboard. Um, so it's not like you could press a key, it would then open a folder and then you could then have a look at other options within that folder like you can on the normal Stream Deck. Um, it's just unfortunately you are only able to use the six keys that are on the keyboard and the six keys only. To me, this isn't an issue because I already have a Stream Deck, so I already have those folders set up and everything that I need that way. So the uh, S keys on the actual keyboard itself would just be like the extra stuff for me, like, I don't know, maybe muting the microphone quicker or just something like that. Um, but generally for me, it's not an issue, but to someone who doesn't have a Stream Deck and is only able to use the keys from the keyboard, I don't know, maybe having a folder option available in future would be really cool because all it takes is you'll just have to press it once, open a folder, and then you have access to other things. Um, just generally, I feel like six maybe isn't enough for the time being, but who knows, maybe they'll add more. So in terms of customization, whether you wanna just stick to your Corsair IQG macro keys, um, you can customize those in the Corsair IQ software and you can change them to do different aspects of what you want on your PC or anything like that. Um, or obviously if you want to change them to the Stream Deck integration stuff, you can actually go ahead and do that in the Stream Deck software. So you have a lot of customization when it comes to the macro keys on the keyboard itself. And uh, yeah, I just think it's really cool. You have loads of options and it just gives you more personalization and control over the keyboard. Just like a lot of peripherals out there as well, you can still change the RGB lighting effects with it as well. So mentioned before that you do have the 19 zones of RGB with the per key LED uh, customization as well. So you can have a lot of fun going through the Corsair IQ software and changing all the keys to any different colors or anything like that. Different lighting effects, speeds, brightness, you name it, you got it in that Corsair IQ software. With these softwares though, it might be a little bit of an issue for some people, because not only do you have to install one software, being the IQ software, so that you can go ahead and do the firmware updates and change the lighting effects and do whatever you want that side. If you want to have the Stream Deck integration side, you do have to install the Elgato Stream Deck uh, software too. So not everybody likes to install one, let alone two softwares. And the fact that you have to have them both open as well um, in order to get the most out of it every day. I don't know, it could be that it might strain a lot of people's PCs, especially if they don't have a decent PC or anything like that. Um, so it might just be a little bit of an issue for some people. For me personally, it's fine because I do have other Elgato products that I do use day to day. So all of these softwares are installed and opened anyway. Um, but obviously for other people, it might be a massive downer to them. There is so much I do love about this keyboard. Um, the main thing for me though is the wrist rest. I love the wrist rest so much. It's so comfortable and I'm just so happy they've decided to upgrade it from that plastic slash rubber wrist rest to the plush leatherette version. Whilst yes, it does still have the plastic clips and unfortunately it could break over time or anything like that, it still feels super comfortable and I'm absolutely in love. I think that the whole look of it is great. It feels very nice. It's got a lot of weight to it, which is great because you know that it's not gonna end up moving around your desk or flying off of it very easily or anything like that. 
um, and just generally you have the customization options when it comes to the RGB lighting effects and now with the Stream Deck integration. And then finally on my lights list is the PBT Double Shot keycaps. I've been using the keyboard for a while now and I still haven't noticed any kind of grease or shine or anything to any of the keys and just generally it makes the keyboard look a lot more cleaner. There wasn't really much I disliked about it, it was more just little niggly things. Um, one of them being the no folder option, so obviously when it came to the Stream Deck integration you can't have any folders, um, which could be a shame for people that don't have a Stream Deck and obviously did want more options than just six. Another one is the software, so having both of them open at once and obviously having them both installed. Again, it's not a problem for me because I have these softwares anyway, but for some other people it might be a major issue. Overall though, I personally don't think that this does have some crazy upgrades from the original K95 keyboard. Um, so if you already have a K95 keyboard and you're not bothered about the um, plush leatherette wrist rest or you're not bothered about the PBT double shot keys, um, then obviously it's not really an issue for you because you still get the Stream Deck integration if you want. Um, obviously you still have to download both of the softwares anyway um, but yeah so upgrading from a k95 already i don't know it's up to you personally i wouldn't really do it um, but when it comes to buying a new keyboard or something like that if all of these features turn you on and obviously the price doesn't turn you off then you're good to go that is all from me today guys if you did enjoy the video please make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure to go ahead and do so. And whilst you're at it, turn on the notifications as well so that you guys know when our newest videos go live. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you for the next video. Bye.